Well, welcome to the Zoom meeting. This evening, what I'd like to do is to cover the uh, on how to build a GUI using both the uh, Java FX and the Java Swing library. And I'll start off just by going over the assignment. So what I think I'm sharing is this right here. It says the Java GUI cell phone bill. And I have a video for the Java FX version. The unfortunate thing is there's a lot of people who cannot get Java FX to work on their computers, especially with the Mac with the M1 chip, that the brand new chip. So some people can't get Java FX. So what I did is I put up the Java Swing version also. Actually, it took me a lot longer than I was expecting because organizing things on the screen, um, I haven't done it for a while with the with the Swing library and I had some problems, so I just changed the way I wanted to do everything. And I'll go over how I put everything on the form using both Java FX and Java Swing library. So here are the topics that are covered. Border pane, HBox, VBox, grid pane, text field, and text array using Java FX fonts. Well, actually, all the fonts. Here's the video. I encourage you to look over the video. It's not too long, 12 minutes and 18 seconds. And here's the lab uh, assignment. And I'm providing code for Java FX version and also the Java Swing version. And then there's the lab report. Nothing new there. What I'm going to do first is to bring up Eclipse. So here's Eclipse. What I did is I loaded both the Java FX version and I don't care about that one or that one. So now I have the swing version and the FX version. So I can run either one. If I go up Actually, I already have them both running. This is what the Java FX version looks like, and this is what the Swing version looks like. And it looks like I didn't quite make them exactly the same size, but that's okay. Over on the left-hand side, it's called Plans and Prices, and it says Plan A, B, C, D, and how many gigabytes you get, and how much the plan costs, and also it's $15 per gigabyte extra anything you go over the limit. So if I put in my name and I select plan B, and what I get is this covers two gigabytes. And let's say I use three gigabytes. So that means I have one gigabyte over. So I'm going to have $60 plus an extra 15. So I compute that. And here is my bill, 60 plus 15 to $75. There's my name. And when I click to clear, everything gets cleared. This right here is, this is called a text field. A text field is something where you can enter something when you're running a program. This is a label. This is label, 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 text field, text field, label, text field, label, button, button, button. And this is a text array. And with a text array, it's, it can be nice and big. The same type of thing, when I did the swing version, I have plans and prices, name, I can put in Dan, and it looks like I did it a little bit extra in here. I put in three gigabytes, whoops, and B with uh, three gig gigabytes used, compute, name Dan, extra gigabytes is one, which I did not do over here, so I added that as something new, and please pay $75. So they came up with actually the same thing. We're down plan B and gigabytes used, three compute. So here's my name and please pay 75. I guess I could update the FX version to also include the excess gigabytes, but I haven't done that yet. When in either case, when I click the clear button, I want to clear this text field. I want to clear this text field. I want to clear the text field. And I want to clear any of the information that was placed in this text array. 
compute. Okay, well, how about if I go to plan C? I say compute. Now it's only $70 because in plan C, I got, I uh, plan C, I paid more, but I got four gigabytes. And how about if I went up and used like 12 gigabytes? Let's see how much it costs for each one. Here's plan A. I paid $230. If I switch over to plan B, I paid $210, switch over to plan C. I got $190 and switch over to plan D. I got $120. Reason it came up to be $120 is because I started off paying $90. I got 10 gigabytes. I used two gigabytes over, so that cost me $30. So at $90 plus $30 is $120. Clear. How about if I put in my name and I say select plan X and one gigabyte. Well, plan A, plan must be A through D. So here's my message. What I did is, since this right here is a label, I just changed the label to have a message. I changed the font color to red, and I changed the font to bold. Well, let's go back and put in plan B or something. Here's plan B, compute. That means when I had an error message, I had to change it. When there's no error, I had to change the font back to uh, regular size. I mean, taking it off the bold, I had to change it to black and then put a new message in. That kind of makes sense. How about for uh, gigabytes used? I put in A, compute. It says it must be numeric. Uh, let's get this guy to, uh, I'll just leave it blank. Compute, plan must be A to D, and see there's nothing over here. So fix these guys back up again. Uh, plan, plan C, and if I delete that, then I have the program stick in at 0.0. .0. Okay, so if it's blank, I'll fill it in for people. Clear, everything gets cleared off. And then here is exit and go over here and click exit and it ends. So what I want to do is to look at, uh, I want to look at see how the FX version is organized. I'm using a border layout and I could have done the same thing with either FX or swing. What I have with the border layout, if I'm using FX, then this is the top, this is the left, in red, that's the center. This is the right, and this is the bottom. Now, in the swing version, they call it north, south, east, west, and I think it's center. I forgot what they called it. But it's north, south, east, west. So they're using coordinates like that instead. So not a big deal there. In the Java FX version, I'm having the program create the top, create the left, create the center, create the right, and create the bottom. And in the FX version, I also have, this is going to be a, it's a vertical box. Things are going down. So it has name, which is a label, and then a text field. This right here is an H box, which is horizontal. So it has the, uh, the text field followed by a label, and the same thing for gigabytes, a text field, and a label. This is kind of a flow layout. It just goes from left to right, which is the default. So I just put in a button, a button, and a button, and I provided how much space I want in between each of those buttons. I want to look at the FX code, public class, and here, class level variables. So I created a, a variable, actually, for uh, the name, plan gigabytes used customer name please pay and gigabytes used anything that needs to be accessed by more than one part of the program i need to declare these controls as class level variables for example though these buttons right here are not being accessed by any part of the program except the part of the program that actually created the buttons if 
I wanted a different part of the program to go in and modify the text on the button, or if I wanted the program to go in and disable a button for some reason, in that case, then I would have to declare the buttons as class level variables so that all parts of the program can go in and modify these things. Here's clicking the X and the exit. That one shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is look at see how these things are created. So here's my border pane. I have my borders, and that's my uh, uh, top, left, center, right, and bottom. This is a member function that is part of my program. I just call it create top. I call it create left, create center, create right, create bottom. So then somewhere down here, I have to find those things. Ah, here's create top. Okay, then after I created the top, create the top here, then create left, and it'll go down and execute this code right here. In the same type of thing for uh, create center, create right, and create bottom. So the, the fancy one is going to be create center because on create center is where I have several different things going in. So this right here is labeled, and here's a this is a, a vertical box, a horizontal box, another horizontal box that all become part of the center. So border pane. Border pane is one of the things that, that's an object that already belongs to Java FX called border pane root. Root is the name that I gave it, and it's a fairly common name to give things. So I could have called this anything. I could have called it like main form, and then I could say main form, main form, main form, and main form. This is a, a name that can be provided when you create the program and just have to make sure that you use that name. So then after it creates everything right here is the text that says Java FX cell phone bill. And that's what appears right here on the top is my window that's controlled by the window. And then I have to uh, set my primary scene and then I have to make it visible. Here's create top. This is a horizontal box right here. I said I want it centered, Arial font, cell phone billing, set the font to font 36 bold. So what is 36 bold? 36 bold is something that I created somewhere. Ah, there it is, right inside this, uh, this member method. I had to create a font object, and I happen to call it font 36 bold. And that says font, Arial, font weight is as bold, size is 36. So I created an object called font 36B, and then I could use it right here. If I change this font to like go back and relaunch the program, well, probably I should let me stop the old one right here and stop this guy here. And then I'm gonna say, here's my FX version. Ah, oh, nice and big, right? Okay. I forgot what it was before. Oh, it was 36. Okay, now it's not quite as big. Okay, pretty cool. Exit. We'll have to see how that exit button works a little bit later. Uh, create the center. Well, right here, actually, private. Hbox, create top. So what it's returning is an Hbox. So then right up here, set top, it's going to be root dot, and then it's going to be an Hbox right here. So it creates an HBox control. Actually, I'm not even returning the data type. Ah, cool. That's fine. I could have made it void then. This is just the text I want displayed. Create a label. I happen to call my label plans and prices. So label. Plans and prices, new label, and here is the text that goes in the label. So it has plans and prices, backslash in, go down to the next line, bunch of dashes, the next line, information for plan A, go down to the next line, etc. Then I have to say add my label, which is this guy here, into the V box, and then I'll return the V box, the vertical box, which will then Create the center. Here's a V box where it says customer data. Here's my customer data. Then here's another V box where it has name and text name. So that's these two things right here. And then I'm adding 
uh, both of these into my VBox one. And then here's an HBox. I call that one HBox two. I guess I could have called it, it doesn't really matter. I just want, wanted to keep track of about one, two, three, four. So HBox two is these two things. I have a, a text field and a label. So here's my uh, text field. And I set the size to 40 by 20. That's how big I wanted that box to be. And then the label that goes right next to it is going to be plan A through D. So since this is horizontal, it's just going to start putting one thing after another right next to each other, as opposed to the vertical box, which put things one, and then it went down to, and did the next one. So here's another H box to get my gigabytes used, and then all of those things get added. Here's my spacing. Spacing was 10 pixels, so that gives, that gives me my spacing here, my spacing here, uh, and my spacing here, so that I got all that spacing in. So how did I know to use a 10? Well, actually, I put all that stuff up, and I started playing around with it, moving stuff around, and playing around with the numbers to get it to look the way I want it to look. There are things where you can just drag things onto the screen, but that's like from a different company and one more thing to learn how to use. Here is my right-hand side. And this time I used a label for customer bill, another label for name, another label for please pay. And since, uh, I want you to look at the difference here. This one says label, LBL customer bill. It has customer bill. Here it says customer name equals new label name. Right here, I am actually declaring and actually creating. Well, I'm, I'm declaring the, the reference LBL customer bill, and then I'm assigning uh, well, right here, I'm creating the object that goes into customer bill. LBL customer name. All the way up at the top. Here it says uh, a label LBL customer name, but nothing actually was put in it right here. All I did was, it, it's like a variable, but in our case, it's, it's a reference. It's a variable that will hold a control or an object, but nothing's there yet. And I needed it up here because when I run the program, if I put in uh, Dan and then A and then something here, it says name, Dan, and when I hit clear, it clears it out. So the compute, the action that's caused by compute has to modify the name and also clear has to go and clear out the name. So there's two parts of the program that need to do the modify name, but nothing modifies the word customer bill. That way, no, since, since I did it that way, I can declare LBL name and instantiate it at the same time because it's not used anywhere else. But txt name i needed to make it as a as a class level variable okay and i just cover on the right side okay create bottom use an h box alignment center um new button and here's the text that goes on the button the word compute i set the size the 110 by 20, and this is called a lambda. What it says is on action, go when the action, when somebody does something and clicks it or moves across it or whatever, then it is going to go to the compute member function 
that is part of my program. So somewhere, ah, oh, there it is. So this is what is tying the compute button click to the actual button. So down here is compute. And then here's the clear. I'm going to tie, after I create the clear button, I'm going to uh, link the action on the clear button to this member method called clear, which is right there. So there it is clear, it has text name dot clear, which is clear as a member, uh, member variable that belongs to text boxes as part of Java FX. So I'm going to clear out the name, the plan, the gigabytes used, and these other things for customer name, customer please pay, and plan, and gigabytes used, all of those things, I'm going to reset them to my original values. So on compute, here's plan. I'm going to start with the initial values right here. Right here, I'm going to see there's a plus sign. That's going to concatenate two strings together. So it's going to say name, colon, space, and then it is going to go get the text from the text name field. So then right here, this is my, this right here is TXT name. So if I put Alfred E. Newman, it says name, colon, space, Base Alfred E. Newman, that's where it put all that stuff together. It created a new string called name, colon, space, and then Alfred E. Newman. And then it set that new string using set text into LBL customer name, which is this label right here. Now here's a try box. So the try box, first thing it does, it says get the text out of the gigabytes used a trim. That way, for gigabytes used, if I put in space, space, space right in here, it's going to get rid of any of the extra spaces and it's not going to worry about those guys. So I'm going to go get the text out of this, uh, this, this uh, text field. You have to remember that this is text. So what's really in there is not the number two, it is one or more ASCII characters. So a two is really a binary uh, well, hexadecimal um, 32. So it says 0011, 0010. It is not a number two, which would be 00000010. So I'm using this parsing here and converting it into a double and then storing it into GB used. So GB used is a local variable that has the numeric value that has been converted from a text string of text characters into a numeric value. So then when I have something in here, if I had gigabytes used as like a, well, I don't have enough room in there. How about X? I just call it compute, and I say X right here. Ah, it says value must be numeric. So since the conversion is inside of the try block, down here is the catch, and it's going to say value must be numeric because I didn't have anything. Now, notice another thing that one of the things I did extra, because I had to do some extra work to convert this Java FX version in order to the swing. So if I go back and run the swing version, so here's the swing version, oops. Here's my swing version and here's the FX, give me a break. FX version, so on gigabytes used, if I have an X in here, it comes up and says must be numeric. And if over have here, it says value must be numeric. So, well, the text is a little bit different, but I also changed the font to bold and uh, red just to be fancier when I updated 
the code. So I could do the same type of thing over here inside this catch. I could have modified it to uh, red, but then I'd also have to, uh, when I hit the clear button or I had a good process, I'd have to go back and set it to black and turn off the bold. I ended up doing in the swing version, but when I click exit, it closes. We have to remember that just because I created a button called exit, that doesn't really mean anything until I make it happen in my code. If I go down here and look at the uh, this guy right here, when I created the button, button exit set on action system dot exit and my exit code is a zero. So this is what is causing the program to end when I click the exit button. Okay, now over to the, uh, the swing version. Uh, press tab here, plan, I'll put that as plan B. Three gigabytes. Okay, so here is the swing. And all of these things here, I probably should take these guys off. Actually, I don't even need these right here. Those are the coordinates of what I was doing. We're placing controls on the screen. I think recording is on. Well, this stuff right here is highlighted just because I made changes. And I am porting Java X dot swing dot star. So the, the star says to bring everything from swing. Here's another weird thing to look at. It says private static J text field and J text area, J label, J button. The, the controls for swing typically start with the letter J. Whereas with the Java FX version, they just call it text build, label, and button, etc. Here's a constant price per gigabyte, $15. And there's more stuff I don't need. Here's a member method that says create and show GUI. Here's something called add components. Oh, public static void main. We've seen that a whole bunch of times. Java x swing dot swing utilities dot invoke later new runnable public void run create and show GUI. So then where is the code for create and show GUI? There it is. So it's setting up a frame and it has the text here that goes up on top of the windows uh, title bar, and it closes on exit, add components to frame. It says get content frame. Oh, add components to frame. So that's going to be down. This is the name of my member method, add components to frame. And I could have put all the code here from that member function. I could have put all that code in here and not call it as a subroutine, but oh well. That's cool. Then set the frame size to 680 by 350. So that's what the size ended up to be. So how about if I make it a little bit smaller and call it 300 and then run this program again. Check that out. I didn't have enough room for all my buttons. Ha ha. Oh, well, so that's not working out too well. So 300. And what was it before? I forgot. It was 350. Okay. Still not quite. Well, I see if I could keep playing around with that, then I could move these buttons up, move each one of those buttons up a little bit if I had it to 320, just to make it look nicer. Now, the nice thing about using the border layout is all of these sizes and everything else will be figured out automatic for, automatically for us. But what I did here on the swing version, instead of using a border layout, is I went in and hard-coded all of those numbers. So here's my add components. And I'm getting my pane. It says pane. I do a, a set layout to a null. And that means I'm not using a border pane or any of these other layouts that automatically come with swing.
and I'm creating my fonts up here so I can use them later. Here is an Arial Plain 16 and Arial, Arial Bold 16 and somewhere, uh, oh, there is my 36 Bold. That's for my uh, label at the top. And it says one, here's, here's insets, 190 plus my left inset, my Y is five plus the insets. Here is my inset. So this is right here. So here's zero, zero, but my inset is five across and looks like 190 down. So. It says, instead of calling this 00, zero I'm referring to this as inset. Well, this would be 00, zero plus the insets. Cell phone billing. Okay, so then what I did was, I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of my offsets right here. So then I can say, Here's my upper left-hand corner of where it says cell phone billing. And on Snagit all the way down here on, on the bottom, it says I am at position X is 180 and Y is 10. Oh, well, here I got 190 and five. So I was pretty close on there. So that is how I figured out the position on the screen was just by using one of the, uh, uh, image editors that would display the coordinates on the screen. Uh, here is something you can also do, maybe for a little debugging. Uh, I'll do that later. But here, I put the plans and prices on the created label for the title where it says customer data, created another label for name, and then a text field for txt name and i put that on the screen with the coordinates here and here's the size 200 by 300 and create a text field and label for entering the plan here's the size position location and size and size is 160 by standard height and the same type of thing for entering the gigabytes used and the text area for displaying the bill. Then create a button for compute. And down here, I said action performed, action event. When, when it's clicked, I'm going to go to the member method that I wrote below, it's called BTN button compute. Click, then here is clear, clear form. And the exit goes to system exit. Or I talked about main. So here is button compute click. It has a bunch of local uh, variables here because they're inside of a, since they're inside of a, a block of code for the curly braces that ends all the way down. Here, no, it wasn't that nice. See where it said this guy here. And that's even nicer. With Eclipse, I can double click on a curly brace and it will highlight everything that belongs to that curly brace. So here's switch on plan. So if I double click on plan for my switch statement, then I see everything that belongs to this open curly brace all the way down to the closed curly brace. Here's the catch block, double click, and I have everything highlighted that belongs to the catch block. A lot of this code I just copied over from the Java FX version. But right up here is where I had to do some extra work to reset Gigabytes used to set it to font 16. 
set the color to black and a few other things. Because when I had an error down here in the catch, I set this to font 16 bold, I set it to red, and I had the words must be numeric. I'm going to under the assumption that it's good unless I hit that catch block. So if it's if things are good, then I set everything back to their normal state before I did any processing. For case A, here's my base rate is $50. And I probably really should have used defined constants at the top of uh, at the top of the program instead of these magic numbers. Verify that a plan was selected. Uh, somewhere up here is valid plan. Okay, switch plan. So case A, B, C, D, default valid plan equals false. So starting off, I'm going to assume that the plan is valid unless I fall through the switch statement. And in that case, I'll set the valid plan uh, flag to false. And if it comes up to be false, or if it's true, then I'll compute the bill. Otherwise, I'll set everything to uh, red and pen must be A to D. And there's the end of my compute. Here's the clear form, same type of thing as I had before. And action performed. I have to do a little extra work using swing. So here it says, get source. All of the different actions for all of the buttons came in here. So now I have to really determine whether I have, it was the, the source coming in was a button, uh, button compute, button clear, button exit, and then make decision on what I want to do. So here, you know what? I really don't need those curly braces. Uh, just to make it look nice. Here's the at override. That means that this is a virtual function that action perform. We are going to override the default action performed if it happens to be inside of our program. Otherwise, um, we'll just get Java's normal actions for uh, buttons being clicked. So we want to say, if it happens in our program, we're going to figure out which button was uh, clicked. Oh, here's a little code right there. If I'm saying if the gigabytes used is an empty field, then set it to zero. So this right here, I could even have some spaces or whatever in there, compute, and then it becomes zero because of the code right here. Here we go, Java FX fuel pump simulator ECR lab assignment. First thing is you do not need to write any code or even make this program run. So it doesn't matter whether you have Java FX running on your machine or not, because you don't need to make the code run. But what I'm asking is that you go in and look at the code. Here's a definition of what's going to happen in industry is once a program is up and running, they get it running, everything seems to be working fine. Okay, so here's a fuel pump simulator. Okay, so here, here is a program that has already been updated. And I can kind of, since I'm doing that, I can kind of give you an idea of what's going to happen. So the first thing you have to do is make a deposit. So if I put in like, uh, $6 in here for my deposit, 
And then I say I want uh, 87 octane. Price is $4.50 a gallon. Start the pump, and there it goes. My sale goes up right here, and I have a, how much did I put in? I put in, oh, $6. Okay, so then there's my deposit. Uh, there's no change left over. I clear this thing out by deposit $6 again, and then select 87 octane, start the pump. And then I stop right here. I've only have $2.60. My change is $3.40, clear. I go up to file. Oh, edit. Add another pump. Edit. Add another pump. Now, this becomes really, really easy to add another pump because each one of these things right here is an object. I have an array of pump objects. So all I have to do is add one more object into the array to make it work. And also I get here is pump one, deposit change and clear and all this other stuff. Edit prices. I can change the price of these guys. Uh, there's a print receipt, edit, add a pump. Oh, maybe I don't have this one running. Okay. So this project here, I want you to look at it. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine Java files that build the program. Help. I do help about, and what that does is it's going to go over here to this about file to build uh, this extra little uh, window here. And then edit prices. So in here is my edit prices. I'm going to start that program again. Oh, here it is. I already have it running. On edit, you may have to put something in here to select between gallons and liters. Here is something that says price per gallon. That message right here is going to be have to be changed. Here is nine tenths of a cent. So, I mean, give me a break, people. Here is 450.9. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. How can you get like nine tenths of a the price? That dates back to the time when I actually had plastic coins for um, a mill and a five mill piece which is a tenth of a cent and a half a cent. They don't have those anymore. I mean, if I got elected president, the first thing I'd do is make those gas companies take off that nine-tenths of a cent. But they'd probably just round it up to $4.51 or whatever. Oh, is that expensive? Well, yeah, let's go and edit the price. Edit the prices. Uh, what's the price now? Is it like three? Okay, except so now it comes up to three eighty nine. So you're gonna have to figure out the prices and everything else. Now, the easy way, I think. Uh, oh, Vin, can I get you to mute your uh, mute, please? If yes, sir. Through and look at each of those files and do a find for gallon or gallons. Okay, well, there's nothing in that one. Here it's uh, how about in print search for gallons. 
Nothing. Okay, pump, search for gallons. Oh, check that out, see? Now, when you start going through the code, any one of these files that have something to do with gallons, that's a good place to start looking to make changes. So right here is gallons, gallons, gallons. There's gallons. So then if you go through the file and look for anything where it has gallons, just make a guess at what parts of the program would be, need to be changed and make a guess as how much time you think at your skill level it would take to update the code to either do uh, gallons or liters. And on edit, you're going to have to add something into, add one more thing into this uh, selection here. See how this, how I can select these things, add a pump, add edit prices. This is a pull down menu, view, uh, viewer print my receipt, select pump, pump one. So here is the receipt that if I, if I say print, so check that out, isn't that cool? I can even have this Java program print a receipt for me. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so the printing of this thing, if I look at it, I can see right up in here that there is a spot for gallons. So then I'm printing the receipt. There's something in here for gallons. So that is something that's going to be have to be changed. And here is it's a price per gallon. So that is something that has to be updated. So just go through each one of those files and find any reference to gallons or gal, G-A-L, and make a guess of what code has to be changed, how long it would take you to change it. And that's what the project is. You don't need to do any changes to the code to make it work because what I'm asking is for you to do the ECR part, the engineering change request, and not implement the ECO, the actual ECO, uh, the engineering change order. 